There have always ever been 12 tribes of Israel, 12 sons of Jacob, who later became Israel, who uh, and those sons became evolved and became families and tribes. Later on the exodus from Egypt, they sort of homogenized into a people, into the people of Israel. They became a one people of 12 tribes. Um, after the temple was built uh, by King Solomon, his son Rehavam had the kingdom torn away from him. It, it turned into two tribes that made up the kingdom of Judah, which is Judah and Benjamin, and ten other tribes which made up the kingdom of Israel, with the priests and the Levites of the Levitical, of the, of the Levitical tribe uh, being spread out throughout the land with the different tribes. Now, the twelve tribes of Israel lived in relative disharmony. If you read the Bible, there's so many wars and so much tension and brothers fighting brothers, and it's pretty horrible. In that sense, there is some merit to the fact that we are now one Jewish people and are not uh, tribal in nature, or, or not tribal like de facto in, 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 essence, in reality. I'll make a separate video about that. I enjoy the tribal idea, and I'm a fan of it, regardless of the sort of uh, modern implications of tribal and uh, tribalism and what that means. I enjoy the fact that there were 12 of them be making up one kingdom. It was later split. The 10 tribes were besieged by Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, in uh, the 8th century BC. And he conquered them, and he sent them away to exile. They were never really seen or heard from again. The, t the lost ten tribes of Israel is a thing. It's been studied and followed and scrutinized, you know, what happened to them, where are they. There are different theories and speculations as to where they could be now. But there's nothing concrete, I think, um, to suggest that they have been found and acknowledged and that they are back. So we'll see if and when that happens. The interesting thing I want to point out is that when the ten tribes left their kingdom, right, the kingdom of Israel with, with its capital, Samaria, King Shalmaneser brought foreigners, which he had exiled from other locations, to the kingdom of Israel. And they were still there with their pagan gods, worshipping whatever they were worshipping. And the problem was that they were not aware that the land of Israel is the land of the one Hebrew god. So... You can't do that. You can't worship pagan gods in the God, in the land of Israel. And so there were beasts and animals who would kill them because of this who, and maim them. And they understood that it was because of this. So the Assyrians took a priest or maybe more than one from exile, a Hebrew priest, brought him back to the kingdom of Israel in order to teach the locals, who were now locals, I mean, the foreigners who had become locals, how to fear the Hebrew god and continue to worship their pagan gods. I don't think there's, I don't, I don't think there's a similar uh, occurrence in the Bible. It's interesting every time I read that, and it just goes to show. It speaks to the uh, nature of the Hebrew people as people who want to keep their own, live and let live. They, we don't want to take over the world. We don't think everyone is supposed to be Hebrew. To convert to the Hebrew faith is a long and arduous process. And we turn away converts at first. We don't want converts. So, you know, that's the way to think about it. The Hebrew people are an exclusive club. And I mean that, you know, just half jesting, half serious. And if you want to be a part of these people, it's a long path and a long journey. And that's why um, it's a live and let live. There are many gods, right? And there's the one Hebrew god. You follow yours, I'll follow mine. And it doesn't need to clash because even in Israel, you can worship other gods and still fear the one Hebrew God. I'm interested in that. I want to know more about that. It's, uh, there's nothing like it in, in, in the story of, of the Book of Kings.